Hello, in this presentation, we're going to go through dose calculation of a therapeutic ultrasound machine and kind of what do those buttons mean on the machine and how do we set it up effectively for our patient and the condition that we're working with. So the machine settings, there are only four things to remember when setting up an ultrasound machine. The frequency, the pulsing or continuous power and time and I'm going to go through each one with you in this presentation. So in principle there's no need for the often used recipe book in which a list of conditions is produced alongside the treatment dose. One of the reasons for this is that the best recipe for all the conditions one might encounter does not exist, certainly not from the research evidence base. Secondly, there is effectively no need to learn a whole list of such formulas for successful application. One needs to apply the principles to the particular tissue in question, taking into account the relevant parameters. So let's start with frequency. Taking into account that most uh, frequently available treatment frequencies are 1 and 3 megahertz. The option between them relates primarily to the effective treatment depth that is required. 3 MHz ultrasound is absorbed more rapidly in the tissue and therefore is considered to be the most appropriate for superficial lesions, while the 1 MHz energy is absorbed less rapidly with progression through the tissue and can therefore be more effective at greater depth. The boundary between superficial and deep lesions is in some way arbitrary but somewhere around the two centimeter depth is often taken as a useful boundary. Hence, if the target tissue is within two centimeters or just under an inch of the skin surface, three megahertz treatments will be the most effective. While treatments to deeper tissues, so more than two centimeters, will be effectively achieved with one megahertz of ultrasound. So let's now look at the pulse ratio. This determines the concentration of the energy on a time basis. The pulse ratio determines the proportion of time that the machine is on compared with the off time. A pulse ratio of one to one, for example, means that the machine delivers one unit of ultrasound followed by an equal duration during which no energy is delivered. The machine's duty cycle is therefore 50%. A machine pulsed at a ratio of one to four will deliver one unit of ultrasound followed by four units of rest. Therefore, the machine is on for 20% of the time. We can also have continuous ultrasound where there be no rest periods throughout. So with pulse settings, imagine a continuum from the most acute to the most chronic injury and select pulse settings accordingly. If there are pulse settings which are not available on the ultrasound device that you're using, a compromise will need to be made, selecting the alternative which is as close as possible to the ideal. The selection of the most appropriate pulse ratio um, settings essentially depends on the state of the tissue. So the more acute the tissue state, the more energy sensitive it is and appears to respond more favorably to energy delivered with a large pulse ratio, a lower duty cycle. As the tissue moves away from its acute stage, it appears to respond better to a more concentrated energy delivery, thus reducing the pulse ratio or increasing the duty cycle. It is suggested that pulse ratios of one to four are best suited to the treatment of acute injuries. So the more the acute an injury, the lower the ratio. You need to be aware as well that we don't use continuous around bony areas, even if the injury is chronic. So now let's look at the intensity. So the intensity of ultrasound required at the target tissue will vary with the tissue state. So the more acute the injury is, the less strong the ultrasound needs to be in order to achieve or maintain the tissue excitement. The more chronic the tissue state, the less sensitive and hence the greater the intensity required at that site in order to initiate a physiological response. One important factor is that some of the ultrasound energy delivered to the tissue surface will or may be lost before the target tissue, i.e. the normal or uninjured tissues, which lie between the skin surface and the target area.
In order to account for this, it may be necessary to deliver more at the surface than is required, therefore allowing for some absorption before the lesion, the injured site, and allowing significantly remaining ultrasound to achieve the desired effect. So the intensity required for non-thermal effects at the injured site is summarised in the table being shown now. So this is 0.1 watts per centimetre squared to 0.3 for acute, for subacute 0.2 to 0.5 watts per centimetre squared, and for chronic 0.5 to 1 watts per centimetre squared. Sometimes we need to make adjustments to the uh, intensity. So if the treatment depth is less than 0.5, it is not considered necessary to use the table shown. So not enough of the surface dose will be lost to make a clinical difference to the outcome. But if we use an injury that is one centimetre depth, and the intended treatment intensity is 0.4 watts per centimetre squared, then from the table shown below, if we use three megahertz, set the machine at 0.56 centimetre squared, or as near as the machine will allow you. This means that at one centimetre tissue depth, there will be approximately 0.4 watts per centimetre squared remaining. Now let's look at the size of the injured area and the duration that we would use ultrasound. So the greater the size, the longer duration of the ultrasound that would be required in order to achieve a particular effect. The most common method to take account of this factor is to estimate the number of times which the ultrasound treatment had to be used can be placed over the target tissue. Given that the intention is to apply one minute's worth of ultrasound energy per treatment head area covered, there is a direct relationship between treatment area and treatment time. So now we need to look at treatment dose, which is most likely to be effective. Again, it's based on the principle that we need to deliver one minute's worth of ultrasound energy at an appropriate frequency and intensity for every treatment head that needs to be covered. The size of the treatment area will influence the treatment time, as will the pulse ratio being used. The larger the treatment area, the longer the treatment will take. The more pulsed the energy output from the machine, the longer it will take to deliver one minute's worth of ultrasound energy. There is a greater proportion of time during which the machine gives no output during a pulse setting. So how do we work out how much time we should have the ultrasound on? So I've already mentioned one minute's worth of ultrasound per treatment head. The total time taken to treat the injured site will obviously be one minute times number of times the treatment head fits over the lesion times the pulse ratio. Now the pulse ratio is very easy to work out. So we could be working one to four, one to 10, uh, one to two. So all you do is you add the two, two components of the pulse ratio together. So if I'm using one to four, it adds up to five. So I would then multiply it by five. If I'm using a pulse ratio of one to two, it will add up to three. So I will multiply it by three. Now I'm going to give you examples on how to work it out. So let's try and kind of put it all together and let's work it out, the settings for an ultrasound machine for an acute ATFL injury. So ATFL is on your lateral side of your ankle, it's one of the ligaments. The lesion is superficial. So as it's superficial, I would use a three megahertz frequency because that would be the most appropriate. It's acute. So therefore, I'm going to use an intensity of 0 0.2 uh, watts per centimetre um, squared. Now, as it's acute as well, I'm going to use a pulse ratio of one to four. If I use the treatment head and I estimate it around the target tissue, it's approximately the same size as a treatment head. So working on the principle of one minute's worth of ultrasound per treatment head, the time taken to treat the lesion will be one times one times five, which equals five minutes. So let's look at another example. Let's work it out for a chronic lesion of the anterior capsule of the shoulder. Now, this is not a superficial injury. So I'm gonna use one megahertz of frequency. Now the lesion is chronic, 
So I'm going to use an intensity of 0 0.5 watts per centimeter squared. But I need to increase the surface dose to allow for the loss of ultrasound at depth. Using the table previously in um, the presentation, and I've also included a link where you can find it in the description of this video. If I use that table, I should estimate the required surface dose will need to be 0 0.88 watts per centimeter squared. And this is, I'm assuming the capsule is about three centimeters below the skin surface. The lesion is chronic. So therefore, I'm going to use a pulse ratio of one to one. And that would be the most appropriate within that area. Now, if I'm using a large treatment head, remember treatment heads will be different sizes. So you just get the treatment head and put it around the area and see how many times it fits in. So using um, a large treatment head, it's estimated that the target tissue is approximately twice the size of the treatment head. So if I use the calculation to work out time, um, I've got one times two, because it's two treatment heads, plus my pulse ratio is one to one, so that equals two. So that equals four minutes. So my final treatment dose for this injury would be one megahertz, 0 0.88 watts per centimeter squared, pulsed one to one, so 50%, and four minutes. I have mentioned that there's a great website um, by Professor Tim Watson, um, and it has some great resources looking at lots of different electron modalities. And I will put the link for that in my description as well. So you can check it out and expand your knowledge and understanding of ultrasound therapy.